In Philippians, Paul says to die is gain. Gain means to obtain something desirable. It is an increase, not a loss. Paul was saying that it is an advantage for us to die. How was he so much more confident in that than we are? And then I remembered, Paul did know something that we don't know. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to 828 with Kate. I'm your host, Kate Taylor, and today's episode has been highly requested. I asked on Instagram if there were any specific topics you would like me to address, and so many of you said anxiety. And let me tell you, I get it. I truly, truly do. Because when we say anxiety, what we're really talking about is fear. Fear is the root of all anxiety. And fear is the main weapon that the enemy has used against me my entire life. If you have watched my testimony, you will know that I grew up in an abusive home. So the spirit of fear was hovering over my life from the very beginning. By the age of five, I was constantly walking on eggshells, waiting for the next shoe to drop, for the next traumatic thing to happen. That fear then continued to manifest in almost every single possible way over the years. I have been through periods of OCD, where I would walk home from school every day thinking that if I didn't reach the lamppost before a car coming up behind me did, then my mom wouldn't be alive when I got home. I have been through periods of severe panic attacks to the extent where I genuinely believed I would die. I have had nocturnal panic attacks where I would wake up in the middle of the night mid panic. I have been through social anxiety, health anxiety, all kinds of phobias, fear of flying, fear of being a passenger in a car, fear of throwing up, fear of death. Basically name any fear, I have probably had it. I used to joke that I was like the purple character on Inside Out, the one who represents fear. He's just breathing into a paper bag and imagining all these worst case scenarios. That is me. And I have not seen the new Inside Out yet, but I know that they have created a character specifically for anxiety. And I already know I am going to re relate to that. And if you can relate to all of this too, I just want to say, I am so sorry because I think for people who maybe haven't been through these anxieties, it can seem like an overreaction or you're just being dramatic, but I know firsthand how absolutely debilitating anxiety can be and how much of an effect it can have on your life. It can feel impossible to focus on anything else when your mind is consumed by these negative, intrusive thoughts. It can isolate you from your friends and family, keep you out of work, keep you at home. Ultimately, you can find yourself missing out on your life because fear is preventing you from really living it. Now, dealing with all of this as a Christian can sometimes be even harder than it was before you were a believer. Because now you may internally feel like, well, if I were just a stronger Christian, or if I just had more faith, then I wouldn't be going through this. And I need you to know that is incorrect. Becoming a believer does not somehow magically make you immune to the human condition. It does not make you immune to fear or mental health struggles, and if anyone has ever tried to make you feel that way, they are not only wrong, but they are biblically illiterate. Because all throughout the Bible, God says countless times 
do not fear. And he is speaking specifically to believers, which means they were afraid and God has the expectation that we will face fear in this life, whether we believe in him or not. In the book of Psalms, it says, like a father, the Lord has compassion on his children, for he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. He is mindful of our humanity, of how fragile we are. The reason he gets it is because one, he is our maker. He is the one who formed us out of dust from the ground. And two, God himself then decided to put on flesh, become a human being, and dwell among us on earth. So he could understand exactly what we go through. Hebrews 5 verses 7 through 8 say, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Jesus had to experience what we do. He had to go through all the same emotions and anxieties and thank God he did because now we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. In Luke chapter 22, we see Jesus experience extreme anxiety in the Garden of Gethsemane. He had taken his friends there to pray with him, knowing that his death was imminent. He knew that he was about to be brutally crucified, and in his humanity, he was terrified. I can only imagine the level of anxiety that you would feel knowing that something like that was about to happen. And his friends all fell asleep. So Jesus is now alone, terrified, and pleading with his father to take away his suffering. The scripture says, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Some scholars even believe that Jesus was experiencing a panic attack here as the anxiety and fear that he was about to die manifested so physically. So that's the first thing to know. Jesus understands what you are going through. He empathizes with how you're feeling because he too has felt it. The second thing I want to briefly touch on is that it is okay for you to seek therapy if you are a Christian. I personally have been going to therapy every single week for the past two years almost, which also brings me to the sponsor of today's episode. Thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video, allowing me to continue creating free content for all of you. Actually, whenever I am traveling, I specifically use BetterHelp because it can all be done online via phone call, video chat, or messaging, however you feel most comfortable. It has been really helpful for me in big life seasons, such as when I went back to England to meet my dad for the first time. I was using BetterHelp and I was blowing up my therapist on the chat. If you think you could also use some support, you can follow my link, answer a few questions, and BetterHelp will match you to a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. My favorite thing is you can specifically request a Christian therapist if that's important to you as it is to me. You will be matched with someone usually within 48 hours. Just visit betterhelp.com forward slash Kate Taylor or select Kate Taylor during sign up to enjoy a special discount on your first month. Now, getting back to the episode, the reason I wanted to address therapy is because it has been incredible for me. It's been great to have support, to understand more how my brain works. It has been especially helpful in learning how to trust people again after going through trauma. But despite all of that, 
I have been told by people, some people, especially in my comment section, that I don't need therapy because all I need is Jesus and that I should even repent for saying that I have a mental health condition. I'm sure some of you will have dealt with people like this who kind of talk down on those of us who are struggling with our mental health, usually from a position of self-righteousness and ignorance because they themselves have not been through these struggles, so it's easy for them to say. I guarantee that if they had a broken leg, they would be going to the hospital. If they were diabetic, they would be taking their insulin. Mental health conditions and trauma can be seen on a brain scan in the same way their broken leg shows up on an x-ray. So please do not let anyone make you feel like your condition is less than or that it doesn't also require a holistic approach to healing just because it's mental. Now, do I believe God is the ultimate healer? Yes. But does healing always come supernaturally? No. God provides us with healing through many different means, including doctors and therapists whom he has gifted with their passion and their expertise. It is okay to seek God first, casting your cares on him, and seek wise counsel. In fact, God teaches us that we should always seek knowledge and lean on each other for assistance. Proverbs 11:14, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Proverbs 13:10, through overconfidence comes nothing but strife, but wisdom is with those who receive counsel. Seeking therapy does not diminish your faith in any way. It just reflects your willingness to grow and improve yourself. In saying that, I know that therapy is not accessible to everyone. There's times when I definitely have not been able to do therapy. And so I also want to talk about some specific anxieties that I have been through and the ways that I have dealt with them from a more spiritual standpoint. My most recent manifestation of anxiety has been health anxiety. If you have been following the podcast, you have probably noticed that I haven't posted anything since May. The reason being that around that time, I started to experience chest pain and it became so bad one night that my mom had to rush me to hospital where after a series of tests, they basically diagnosed me with pleurisy, which I think is like my lungs were inflamed and rubbing up against my chest wall. It was extremely painful, but we never really got to the bottom of why that had happened. The recovery was long. I didn't get out of bed for over a month, and I've still been having some random symptoms, which have just been making me very anxious. To the point where a couple weeks ago, I was checking my pulse constantly, googling symptoms constantly, and it's obvious to me now that this is just the, the path that my anxiety is currently going down, but I also don't doubt that there is a spiritual element to this because there is a spiritual element to everything, right? It says in Ephesians 6, 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Satan is always watching. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour and he waits for an opportune time to attack us. Opportune means convenient, it's well-timed, and what better time to pounce on my mind than when I'm physically weak and already prone to anxiety. I'm already doing most of Satan's work for him. It's not a big deal for him to just turn up that fear dial a little bit more, and now I'm perceiving every physical symptom as something life-threatening. 
I also think an opportune time is when you are on the cusp of really big, exciting, good things in your life, which is where I feel like I am right now. And I talked about this in the spiritual warfare episode that Satan attacked Jesus the hardest right before he embarked on his three-year ministry, which completely changed the world. Sometimes a spiritual attack is the best indicator that breakthrough is around the corner. Blessings are around the corner. And Satan is trying to steal, kill, and destroy those things before they come to pass. But the only way he can do that is by keeping you trapped in fear. I heard someone say recently that fear is what gives Satan access to your life. Faith is what gives God access to your life. When I realized that this is what was happening with my health anxiety and I was giving Satan way too much access, I started to say every time that I felt scared, I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I have been given authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm me. I also wrote down the main fearful thoughts that I was having and then next to them I wrote, what does God say about that? So if I was thinking I'm worried and I'm catastrophizing, I wrote next to it, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Another thought was that I am scared I am dying. What does God say about that? I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Another thought was, I am scared everything in my life will go badly. What does God say about that? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Write down the fearful thoughts that you are having and then find the answer in scripture. What does God say about that? What's the truth? I think something that often goes along with health anxiety or is perhaps the root of it is this fear of death. And the only thing that has really helped me with this was reading how the Apostle Paul spoke about death. In Philippians, Paul says, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Gain means to obtain something desirable, advantageous, or positive. It is an increase not a loss. Paul was saying that it is an advantage for us to die. How could he possibly say this? Because Paul knew that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. So the gain is that we get to be with Jesus forever. And because of Jesus, there really is no death for a Christian anymore. We simply just pass from one life to the next. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 says, When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come to pass. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Hebrews 2, 14 through 15 says, Jesus has broken the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and freed those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. So if you have believed in Jesus for eternal life, you have nothing to be afraid of anymore. My Bible commentary says, if the Son has set you free, then the only power the devil has over you is what you permit him. Satan is the father of lies, so he'll try to trick you into giving him permission to exercise authority over you, just like he's been doing with me lately. But the devil no longer has the power of death. The gun he's been intimidating you with has no 
bullets. Thus, all Satan can do is deceive you into thinking that the gun still has ammunition, but the fear of death should no longer make you a slave. The Apostle Paul emphasizes this by saying, For we know that if the earthly tent, our physical body, which is our house, is torn down through death, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And I love this commentary by Charles Spurgeon. He said, Many people are in a great fright about the future, yet here is Paul viewing the worst thing that could happen to him, with such complacency that he likens it to nothing worse than the pulling down of a tent in which he was making shift to reside for a little season. Not only that, but Paul says, for while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Paul is saying that being on this earth is like camping. This body is an uncomfortable, temporary tent, and he wants to go home to the real thing. A while ago, I saw a clip of Jackie Hill Perry speaking about death. I think it was just an Instagram reel but it hit me so much that I wrote down what she said. She said, when Jesus is your life, when you know him and know that he knows you, death is nothing but a good thing, because you know that now I get to see the face of the one that I love. If death is gain, then you don't fear it. If you don't fear it, then you don't fear those who can kill the body, meaning you stop fearing people. Because what's the most they can do? Kill you? Imagine how bold you would be if you believed death was gain. For those of us with health anxiety, I would add to that, if we truly believed that to die is gain, then we would also stop fearing anything or any illness that could kill the body. But in all honesty, even after rereading and studying this verse, it's hard for me to grasp that death is an advantage. I think the reason it's so hard for us to not cling tightly to this life on earth is because it's all we know. C.S. Lewis said, we are like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because we cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We can't fathom heaven, so how do we know that we want it more than this? I remember talking about this with my friend Seb once because he had been on a flight where he experienced extreme turbulence. He said people were screaming and crying on this flight, and I think the woman next to him had turned and asked him how he was so calm. And it was because he was listening to worship music and reading Philippians 1.21 over and over, to die is gain. But even still, he had fear. I think we all do, even after reading God's promises. So I started to think again about Paul. How was it that he was so sure? Because he says he's fully confident that he'd prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. How was he so much more confident in that than we are? And then I remembered. Paul did have something that we don't have. Paul did know something that we don't know. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we learn that God had allowed Paul to see heaven. Paul says he doesn't know whether he was in the body or out of the body when this happened, but somehow he was caught up to the third heaven. That means he went to the place where God resides. The verse says he was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. It was after that that Paul wrote to die his gain in the book of Philippians. He wrote it knowing some stuff that we don't about heaven and about death and about the place that God resides. And I suspect that whatever he knows certainly made him confident that being with Christ is far better 
than anything we could ever experience here on Earth. I hope that brings you some kind of peace and reassurance today. I feel like there's so much more I could share. I could do deep dives on all of these topics if that's something you guys would be interested in. Maybe I could do a whole series on mental health and do whole episodes maybe on one on depression, social anxiety, gaining confidence. Let me know in the comments what would be most helpful to you or what you're needing most in your life right now. It doesn't have to be mental health related. I'm just interested to hear what you need and how I could help. Also, please don't forget to subscribe if you would like to hear more faith-based messages like this one. Thank you so much for watching or listening wherever you're tuning in. Until next time, God bless you guys.